Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. The other day I was out the field contemplating the common question, which is better, electric or glow? Now, I do rather like electric models, whether it's planes or cars. They're plug and play for the most part and performance is pretty affordable. The 3S and 4S 2200 mAh packs are great value these days. The motors from the likes of Hobby King produce loads of power for little investment too. But sometimes you want something that goes a bit quicker and has a bit more oomph than the average foamy. Here we have a kit built Chris Foss Watt 4 Mark III with an Irvine 53 on the front. Servos are just your average Futaba S3001 for the tail feathers. Since we're only using a 4 cell receiver pack, I've got a telemetry module installed to make sure I don't run it too low. An AR610 receiver and a high-tech HS85 on the throttle. The ailerons are controlled by a pair of high-tech HS125MGs. Most of the install would apply just the same to electric, just as well as the glow. The main difference being the throttle servo. The engine isn't cheap, around 80 quid, but that's most of the expense. The other bits, like the fuel tank, are cheap as chips. To match the power, you would be looking at a 5 or a 6S 4000 mAh LiPo, costing 30 to 40 quid each. You'd probably get 10 to 15 minutes from a pack, so you'd probably start with around 100 pounds worth of LiPos. The motor and ESC would probably come to around 30 quid too. Quite the investment for moving up a step from the park flyers. One of the biggest complaints with Glow is the ease of use. People seem to think it's a major hassle getting an engine running, cranking with an electric starter, needle fiddling, and if you're really lucky it might just fire. In reality though, a properly set up engine is almost as easy as plugging in a battery. We've got fuel in the tank, and I've put a couple of drops directly into the carburetor for a prime. Because of the orientation of this engine, it will find its way to the combustion chamber pretty quickly. I use a little extension lead for the glow battery, as I use a car type glow driver which tends to fall off due to its length. A touch of throttle, just enough to make it a high idle. A flip of the prop without any power to make sure it's not flooded. The glow battery gets connected and put out the way. A good grip of the model, which is also tied down at the back. A good firm flip and follow through gets us running. But it's running backwards, not a big deal. Cut the engine from the transmitter and give it another flip. You can hear it's running a lot smoother now, much better. The point though, is with a properly set up engine, it really is not any more faffing around than trying to fit a battery and connect it up in most badly designed sport electric models. It's not all that uncommon to have to remove the wing, a right pain. The real difficulty with engines is the learning curve. Trying to go it alone, more often than not, ends up in frustration. And it's probably where a lot of the stories of how much of a pain glow engines are come from. To get into it quickly, you really need to join a club and get some one-to-one -one help. Understandably, not everybody wants to do that. Another thing that comes up is the noise. Now, admittedly, this Watt 4 isn't exactly set up for quiet running. It has a tune pipe that really doesn't do it any favours. But when stooging around doing circuits, rolls and loops, it's actually pretty quiet. Certainly not loud enough to cause anybody any offence. The problems occur when you really open the taps. Some engine setups are louder than others, but they all make quite a bit of noise. I'm lucky enough to have this cricket field to fly at locally. Far enough from the houses, I don't have to worry too much. Interestingly, the noise has brought a few people out to the field to watch, enjoying it rather than complaining. But that seems to be an exception rather than the rule. Of course, there's the club fields, but a lot of them are having stricter and stricter noise limits imposed, even going as far as banning engines for several days in a week. So, which is better, electric or glow? Well, for small lightweight models, electric is far more affordable, in a lot of ways more convenient, and quiet so you can run them pretty much anywhere. For the large sport models, it's not quite so clear. Once you factor in the cost over a year or two, it isn't all that different. Electric can easily match or even surpass Glow these days in terms of power. With Glow, there's less messing around charging batteries. From a single charge, you can run the radio long enough for a day's flying. With Electric, you either need lots of batteries, which need charging the day before, 
or you need three or four to cycle at the field charging from a car battery. I've seen a lot of guys running a noisy little two-stroke generator all day just to charge up their batteries. When you get into the really big stuff, all that goes straight out the window. LiPo packs big enough cost a small fortune, as do the electronics. With Glow it's a similar issue. The big engines are expensive and they get through Glow fuel like it's water. At 15 quid a gallon it gets expensive very fast. With the big models, petrol is king. The engines are fairly affordable, they're fairly efficient, the petrol is cheap even when you add the two-stroke oil. Which brings us again to which is better, electric or glow? The answer is, well, it depends. If you really want the best, try both. Find a club and see for yourself. For me, I like pretty much everything RC. I'm quite happy with electric or glow. They both have their place. Right, well, I'm sure some of you will tell me I'm wrong, or I miss some important details. But that's going to have to do it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, a like is always greatly appreciated. And if you're not already, you can always subscribe. It's free after all. Bye, guys.